Senator Fawcett. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, I come to the, the Senate following a career largely in the military and aviation over a number of years and having flown aircraft ranging from the, the venerable DC-3 or C-47 Bravo Dakota uh, through to the most modern military helicopters and GA aircraft and flown all around this country, I'm aware of the importance of aviation to Australia and to Australia's community. In South Australia alone there are some 400 regional airports and airstrips uh, enabling passenger transport, freight, uh, important services to communities such as the Royal Flying Doctor Service. Mount Gambier, for example, in South Australia is one of our busiest regional airports and it directly affects the employment of over 230 people and contributes some $29.7 million to the, the state um, gross state product. Adelaide Airport, for example, employs over 16,500 people and adds $1.6 billion to the GSP. And nationally, the impact is even greater, uh, some $13.5 billion directly to the economy, some 149,000 jobs, uh, further $11 billion into the economy because of the supply chain, and another 97,000 jobs through that. So it's a significant contributor to our economy and to the way our society runs. But it is a sector that is under some stress at a range of levels. Certainly for the larger operators, the high capacity uh, regular public transport operators, uh, the global factors are having a huge impact. And we've just seen this week, in fact, Qantas making decisions about maintenance that has affected many people uh, here in Australia and also goes to affect our, our sovereign capability to retain an engineering capability in country. Domestically, we also see pressures uh, upon not only the GA sector, but you need to realise that aviation is a broad scope of people, from your ag operators who spray crops through to your aerial firefighters, your rescue services, air ambulance operators, people that do the coast watch operations, the mail runs, the bank runs. Uh, there's a whole range of people who contribute to our society through aviation, and many of them are under significant pressure. Uh, whether that be through excessive regulation or whether that be uh, through the application of regulation that promotes, makes life difficult for them. And we saw that significantly earlier this year with the release of the report uh, into the Pelle accident at Norfolk Island, where we saw a number of issues uh, with the regulator and ATSB uh, that need to be addressed. So it's a vital part of our economy and I'm pleased to say that the coalition has been listening to industry both prior to the election and post the election. Uh, we've had a number of meetings uh, with industry, everybody ranging from the one-man Lamy workshops uh, through to larger engineering firms, uh, smaller flying operations, right through to large corporate uh, organisations to understand what the pressures are on them and how we as a government can try and take some of those pressures off. And in the aviation policy put forward by the coalition, there are a number of points that uh, go to this. Uh, certainly the topic of this week has been a lot about the abolition of the carbon tax and its impact on aviation fuels and businesses, and we're talking in the hundreds of millions of dollars that that has impacted on the aviation sector here in Australia. But some of the other key points in the policy are looking at establishing a, a high-level external review of aviation safety and regulation in Australia, which closely maps one of the recommendations coming out of the Pelair report. Uh, there's support for regional aviation, including uh, new and better targeted on-route rebates. There's also an increased focus, uh, recognise the importance of airports in Australia. Not only do we have the focus on things like Sydney's second airport, but the government is very aware of the fact that the airport infrastructure we have has its primary use as an airport. And whilst the commercialisation and the, the leasing of some of the secondary airports has meant that there are non-commercial activities there, the key focus must remain on the aviation capability that that represents and the potential for that to grow to meet future demand uh, in coming years. The government also has a, a priority on revitalising the general aviation sector uh, through an action agenda and making sure that things like security measures, which can be an onerous imposition on airlines and airport operators, are in fact risk-based and only to the extent necessary. 
Now, there are other aspects to the policy, but one of the key ones has been the review of regulation. And I'm pleased to report to the Senate that today the Deputy Prime Minister and the Minister for Infrastructure and Regional Development, who has responsibility for aviation, the Honourable Warren Truss MP, announced today the independent review of aviation. And uh, he announced the terms of reference and the expected outcomes as well as the panel of that. And I just want to pick a few of the outcomes that this review seeks to achieve and to deliver to the sector. The review will examine and make recommendations on, as required on the aviation safety roles of CASA and the Australian Transport Safety Bureau and other agencies. It will examine and make recommendations on the appointments process and criteria applied for key aviation safety roles within CASA and ATSB, again stemming back to some of the recommendations coming out of the Pele report about making sure we have the right people with the right competence, and that's task-specific competence. People may be very good, may be very competent, but for a particular task they need both qualifications and experience in that task to do the role. Also looking to review the implementation of current aviation a regulatory reform program which has been going on an awful long time and it's been creating much uncertainty in the sector. In South Australia, for example, as operators for the state government's emergency medical service contract look to bid for that new tender, they're uncertain as to which rules they need to bid for. And if the government, state government is not going to allow for regulatory change as part of the contract, then it makes it very difficult for a company to bid not knowing the standards to which they have to actually provide aircraft, numbers of aircrew, rosters, etc. Um, the review will also look at the cost impacts on industry. And that is one of the most important points, that the government is looking to make sure that the aviation industry is not just safe, but it's sustainable, that it's a viable industry sector uh, for the future of Australia. Importantly, it will also provide options to government for improving the oversight and enforcement of aviation regulations, including the rights of review, because we do see cases, some running right now, where companies have been shut down and months after that are still yet to have their opportunity in the Administrative Appeals Tribunal to put their case as to why they believe that decision was unfair. And so there is a requirement to make the application of regulation appropriate. So our whole focus on deregulation in this government means that we have the regulation we need to be safe, but we make sure it's quality, that it's actually informed by people who understand the industry, so it's best practice. And importantly, its application is one that not only maintains safety, but also makes sure that where there is an equal safety case, but one has a more commercially viable application, then that is the one that the regulator should be looking to implement so that the industry is sustainable. Now, I'm pleased that uh, Mr David Forsyth, AM, is going to be chairing the review panel. Uh, he's well known in the aviation industry in Australia as the chair of Safe Skies former Chair of Air Services Australia and some 30 years experience in safety management. He'll be joined by Mr Don Spruston, a uh, former Director General of Civil, A Civil Aviation at Transport Canada and Director General of the International Business Aviation Council, as well as Mr Roger Whitefield, former Head of Safety of British Airways, Advisor to Qantas and former UK Civil Aviation Safety Authority Board Member. Now, one of the important things that we're aware of is that aviation is not just the large airlines and the high capacity operators. It also includes, as I said before, people right through the gamut of aviation. And so I'm very pleased to see that Mr Philip Rees, uh, the president of the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, will be involved in the re review to make sure that the views of the general aviation sector are going to be taken into account. Now, the panel will be providing its report to the minister in May of 2014, and there are opportunities for the industry at all levels to make submissions. 
And uh, I'm pleased to see that the minister's release talks about the fact that while the review will seek the views of the CASA board and senior management staff of CASA, they will consult closely with industry. And I would encourage anyone involved in the aviation industry to take this opportunity to have their say to shape the future for a viable and safe aviation industry for Australia.